Hello my garden friends. This is Jersey Shore Lisa with MyNJGarden.com with another garden update. It's July 20th and it's a lovely day. The fruit is ripening on the beach plum trees. This looks like it's turning yellow rather than purple, which is interesting. We have the cardinal flower just starting to bloom. Hummingbirds love that one. Here's an Asian pear tree. And this is the first time we're getting some fruit on the Asian pear. It's a dwarf tree. So it's just about as tall as I am, about five foot seven inches. This was the spot where the yellow jacket nest was. And there doesn't seem to be any more yellow jackets around. I really soaked it with um, Dawn dish detergent and lots of water. I actually did it a couple of nights in a row and it seems to be really effective. I don't think they're gonna come back. So I'll be able to fill that in with some more soil and a little more mulch and then we can put those yellow jackets behind us. Here's some more beach plums on this bush. Look how productive that is. And then more on this one. In fact, it's so heavy that it's really bending this portion of the bush over. We have some bee balm that's blooming back there. The apple trees are really lousy. This is what happens to the apples in my yard since I don't spray them with anything. So I definitely need to protect them in some way. I don't know if it's going to end up that I'll net the whole tree as though it's a blueberry bush uh, to keep the bugs away or if I'll need to spray that surround product, which is the kaolin clay slurry. I intended to spray it this year, but I didn't get it in time uh, to start the process. So it has to wait until next year, but I do have uh, the bag of product that's ready to go. These are aronia berries and they are ripening. I expect them to be completely ripe and ready to pick around mid-August. You can see some of them are still very green and some of them are much darker. Aronia is a native plant in New Jersey. The berries are also very astringent. So another name for this plant is the chokeberry. Um, they come in black chokeberries and red chokeberries. Red chokeberries stay very astringent and they're not really good for people to eat but the black chokeberries as they ripen they become slightly more sweet so you can really make them into a delicious jam but even very ripe they're not really delicious out of hand. They still are quite bitter so uh, I think cooking with them is a better idea than eating them out of hand. There's some rosemary, a couple of tomato plants in front of this beautiful Joe Pie weed that's just about to bloom. This is a dwarf variety. And again, this is just about as tall as I am, about five foot seven. Over here in the back of the garden, near the third pawpaw tree, which has grown significantly this season, the solidago is starting to bloom. This is also called goldenrod, and it is another native perennial to New Jersey that is so supportive of the local native pollinators. It's a great addition to the landscape. 
don't confuse goldenrod with a plant called ragweed, which is a common allergen and people think it's a weed and they pull it out of their gardens. Goldenrod is a different plant entirely. We're in the backyard now. I did finish moving those wood chips from the driveway throughout the backyard. So there are still a few spaces that I need to fill in, but uh, for the most part, that project is complete. I trimmed up this bed, kind of chopped down half the asparagus ferns so they could continue to photosynthesize, but they wouldn't be too unruly uh, to maintain. And then I weeded all around and in the back of the bed where that sand is up against the foundation. This is the pineapple sage, which blooms late. It blooms in the fall with the asters. Um, with beautiful red tubular flowers. Uh, this is the blooming oregano, which the pollinators really love during midday, but now in the evening, all is quiet in the garden. This is an interesting sight to see in the evening garden. This is the gugutz, or the kukuzi squash, and this is blooming now. These bloom in the evenings. I've also noticed that though uh, my zucchini have succumbed to squash vine borers, the kukuzi does not. The kukuzi is going strong, so I suspect it is resistant to the squash vine borer. Uh, and look at these beautiful frilly white flowers. They're just so pretty. And they open up at night. So let's take a look at the patch so you can see all the flowers. But just like regular squash, you can tell which ones are the male flowers and which ones are the female flowers because there are fruit behind the female flowers. You can see this one looks like a male flower. You can see underneath. And this one over here looks like a female flower because there's a squash behind it. This is a sweet potato, a blue sweet potato, that I planted in this um, half barrel planter. Uh, I planted it uh, in about five or six inches of dirt. And then as the plant came up, I piled more dirt around the stems, soil around the stems, um, and spread them out to fill the planter. So uh, I just did that again two days ago. Uh, so now that the plant is recovering again and um, I expect it to really overflow and fill the planter. Keep in mind that sweet potato leaves are also edible so you can pick those off and saute them like spinach and enjoy the greens and then in the fall you harvest the delicious sweet potatoes that grow as tubers all along those underground stems. They're a great crop to have, especially something that thrives in hot weather. And then in closing, we'll just take a little updated look at the rain garden. You can see that the balloon flowers have been blooming for some time. So the open flowers look like that. And the, the dying flowers are all around as well. Um, I probably could deadhead these but I like that they spread around the garden, so I tend to leave them and let the seeds spread. Um, hiding in there is a tomato soup coneflower. That's an echinacea cultivar. Um, and the hummingbirds really love these balloon flowers. They're just the right shape for them. And in the early spring, the hummingbirds loved the Solomon seal in this garden and now in the height of summer they're really enjoying the balloon flower so feeding the wildlife with appropriate native flora. Over here we have Maxima rubecchia 
which is great cone flower, and that's blooming now. Um, this is much loved by butterflies. It's a wonderful butterfly plant, um, but bees love it too. I see bees all over it during the day. Thank you for watching everyone. Uh, again, this is Jersey Shore Lisa with MayaNJGarden.com. Please subscribe to the channel and like the video and join me for all my garden updates. Thanks for watching. Happy gardening. Bye-bye.